From 1984 to 96, the Cherokee XJ had a heater control valve, which actuates coolant flow into and out of the heater core. The idea with these is, without hot coolant flowing through the HVAC box all the time, it helps the air conditioner stay cooler. And uh, that's it. This valve is part of the cooling system. It allows hot coolant into the heater core when you activate the heater, and cuts off flow, keeping the heater core no warmer than the ambient air during all other modes of operation. When the engine shuts off and the system loses vacuum, the valve rests in an open position. The main drawbacks of these are they like to spontaneously explode and shoot coolant everywhere and ruin everybody's day. So today I'm here with Jimbo. Hi, how are you? And he's going to demonstrate how to replace the heater control valve with regular old hoses to completely bypass it as it's entirely unnecessary. Thankfully, in 1997, Chrysler simply got rid of the heater control valve, so all you need to do to bypass it is source some 97 plus heater hoses. Buying these new is an option, but we got them for eight total dollars at a junkyard. Good job. Watch out, Ben. <laughs> no! Make sure the engine is entirely cooled down before taking any of these hoses off. All you gotta do is remove the clamps at the end of the four hoses coming off the heater control valve. Now you will lose some coolant, probably around half a gallon. With some pliers you can twist the hoses to break them free, as they'll likely put up a fight if they haven't been touched in a long time. On the firewall it can be rather tricky to fit some pliers in there, and depending on whether or not somebody's messed with this stuff before, there may be some screw clamps instead of these factory tension style clamps. Almost. There it is. Come on. on. <laughs> there we yeah. go. That's it. All right, rip it out of there. Oh, That's is it wrapped around the throttle? That's nice. Yeah, getting coolant everywhere. The heater control valve was present on all Cherokees, regardless of engine, through 1996. This process is the same on all years of the 2.5 and 2.8 liter, but on the Renix 4 liter things are a bit different because of the sealed cooling system, which you kind of have to convert to a recovery system to get rid of it. That'll be its own video. No, don't go off there. No. <laughs> don't do that. There we go. <laughs> There we go. That's all there is to it. Here's your routing. Make sure the throttle cables are all on top of these hoses and they go behind the oil dipstick. And there's this little plastic mount for them that sits on a valve cover stud. And now we just gotta put some more coolant in it and we're done. We are go for engine start. Ah uh, yes, a certified Chrysler vacuum plug. Mm -hmm. One last thing about this swap is the little vacuum line that actuates the valve uh, is still pulling vacuum. So you can go ahead and shove that in there. There we go. Plug. Now there's no longer a vacuum leak. Bingo. And then you can just kind of shove this somewhere. Wow. My heater's not this good. Here, feel this. 